Hey everyone, hope your day is off to a fabulous start. You just feel the presence of the Lord surrounding you today. You know, I want to talk about battling the draw into the unknown or how do we navigate those seasons when life kind of goes upside down or when fear hits, when things are uncertain, when the world can feel very dark and scary. Where do you turn? What do you go to? That's what we're going to talk about today. And so before we do that, let me just welcome everyone real quick. My name is Ruth Hendrickson. I run RHM International Ministries. Really call purpose is to see the body of Christ healed up and whole to have the impact that we're created to have. So if you want to learn more about the ministry, just visit the website. It's ruthhendrickson.org. Okay, battling the draw to the unknown. Before we dive in, let's just take a moment and pray. Heavenly Father, there is so much that comes at us. There's so much that pulls at us. And so, Father, we want the draw, the pull, the desire to be you. And so, Father, we just ask that you, you alert us whenever we're drawn to something else, whenever we're drawn to anything or anyone besides you. Father, that you would open our eyes to see, our ears to hear. And Father, that you would give us the courage to just stay the course and to stay on track with you. So Father, that is our heart cry. That is our prayer. We want to be men and women who wholly, fully follow you all the days of our lives. So Father, just give us that, that alertness to this, Father, because we want to battle the draw to the unknown. We don't want to step in anywhere that is not of you. So Father, we just look to you and we say thank you. We say thank you in advance for, for putting that alert within us. We just say thank you in Jesus' name, amen. You know, I think of the traffic lights where we have the red and we have the yellow and we have the green and we know the green, you know, you go right through and the red, you really should stop. But that yellow, every time you see a yellow light, we weigh out, do we run through it or do we stop? You know, how much space do we have? What's things looking like around us? It's a warning. And so often as we walk with the Lord, as we're drawn to things that we, we don't know or we don't understand or life is upside down and we're not sure where to go, sometimes we see that yellow light and we're not sure what to do. And sometimes much to our detriment, we run the yellow as it's turning to red and we don't, we don't catch the warning or the caution that God's put before us. And how do we know, you know, we don't, we don't necessarily obey the laws or the mandates that he's given us. So again, where do you go? What are you drawn to when life turns upside down or when the fear hits or when things feel uncertain or when things look really dark, when traumas come in, when the pain feels overwhelming, what do you do? You see, each one of us, we have to make that decision as to where we turn when things get challenging. When we don't like life, you ever have one of those days, you just, you want to sign off and just, you know, not deal with life. When the world seems dark or the moments when fear is knocking at the door, what do you do? Who do you turn to? Where do you go? You know, some people, they turn knowingly or unknowingly to the occult. Okay. And, and they're really turning to the superstitions. They're turning to the horoscopes. They're turning to the palm readers. They're they're turning to those that, that uh, are in contact with the demonic realm rather than God's realm. And that pull, that enticing can be, it can be very powerful. And many people think that there's not power to it, but that's actually part of the trap is that it can look fun and it can look enticing. And these are all entry points to go deeper and deeper. But again, each of us makes a decision as to where we go. And there are times you might say, well, I don't go to anything that has to do to, with the occult. All right. Um, there could be subtle traps that we go to also that may not align with the word of God. Um, but I really want to talk about the seeking. You know, we could, we could seek. Um, what are some things? Okay, not the occult, but we can, we can seek earthly wisdom, man's wisdom. Um, we can seek cultural explanations. We can seek things that we can control. All right. So there's other things besides the occult, but today we really want to talk about some of these subtle tracks. And I'm going to use a pretty blatant example because I think it can speak to all of us. You know, Isaiah 819 says, when they say to you, seek after the mediums and the wizards who whisper and mutter. When they say to you, what's the culture saying to us? What, what are our peers saying to us? 
you know, where are they telling us to look? Is it to education? Is it to science? Is it to, uh, you know, human understanding? Where, or is it into the occult? I mean, it could be, there, there's all these things that can look good in the moment. Verse 20 goes on to talk about how they don't speak according to God's word because there is no light in them. Whenever we're looking for the wisdom and the counsel in anything other than God's word, anything other than the things of God, there's no light. Absence of light is always darkness, right? Okay, and so that's when, when we're looking, when, when we're listening to a world, to a culture that does not seek after God, then it's always leading us into darkness. And that's really important to understand. Um, so anyways, you know, someone who's walking outside the kingdom of God, when we're going to them for counsel or somebody with access into the demonic realm, that's the whole realm of the occult. They're not the person that we should go to, even if just for fun, it's not the books we should be reading, even if just for fun or the TV shows we should be watching. In other words, we're responsible for what we're dwelling on, what we're entering in to, you know, what we're aligning with, um, when we go to the wrong source we are likely to see to receive illusions rather than the truth. Isaiah 30, 10 says, they say to the seers, you must not see the visions and to the prophets. You must not prophesy to us the right things. Speak to us pleasant things, prophesy illusions. Get out of the way, turn aside from the path. Let us hear no more about the Holy One of Israel. Oh, isn't that, isn't that just heartbreaking? You know, God, I want the things that I can control and I can understand as opposed to hearing from you. I want the things, the warm and fuzzies, the things that give me the warm and fuzzies rather than hearing from you. Sometimes the words we hear from the Lord are, are difficult, okay, because he, he's not, he, he is the loving God. He is for us and not against us. He's also the father who would discipline his children. He is the God who will speak truth. He is righteous. He is the judge. And so it's looking at the fullness of God. Um, one of the other things that Isaiah responds is why seek the dead among the living? And that took me immediately to 1 Samuel 28. In, in that section of scripture, the mighty prophet Samuel had died. There's great mourning in the land. And at the same time, in, this, in the same you know, um, span, time span, Saul had actually banned all the mediums from the land. In other words, anyone who could um, talk to the dead, who would call back the dead, who would do their seances and this, that, and the other thing. They had been banned from the land. But what happens is Samuel dies, who is always Saul's go-to, you know, um, I can't hear from God myself, but I'm going to trust, I'm going to go to this person who speaks for the Lord. And how often do we sometimes even do that? We're looking to somebody else. And, and Samuel gave him a lot of advice, a lot of wisdom, and some really tough words, too. He did. He was the prophet her, who heard from God, absolutely. But Saul had developed that capacity to hear from the Lord or to trust that he could hear from the Lord. And so what happens is later on, so Samuel dies, and Saul looks up, and he sees this mighty Philistine army coming after him. And what scripture says is he actually became frantic with fear. And we have to remember that fear will always change our viewpoint and impact our decision-making process. So right here, we see that Saul is frantic with fear. And what he does is he asks the Lord what to do. So initially, he turns to the right place. But when he doesn't hear a response from the Lord, he goes seeking elsewhere. And so often, that's what we do. We don't hear a response, or sometimes we hear a response, but we don't recognize it's from the Lord, or we hear a response, and we don't like it. So then we go seeking information elsewhere because we want something that aligns with what we want to hear. So what Saul does is he, you know, he, his initial response, seek the Lord was the correct thing to do, but then he gets himself in trouble because he goes looking elsewhere and he goes, and he tells his, his advisors to find a medium, you know, a woman who, who seeks the dead, who speaks to the dead, who has seances and brings them back. So this very King who had banned the occult from the land now goes in disguise to consult with the occult and ask them to summon up Samuel. He's so desperate that even with this woman he goes to in the dark of the night, trying to hide, pushes back due to, due to the king's mandate. He makes an oath to her that nothing bad will happen to her. How often do we excuse the decisions that we're making 
because we're so desperate for a word. You see, when we get out of step with the Lord, we align with those false securities and we convince ourselves that what's false is actually true. So as much as he had banned you know, the occult from the land, he went back to what he had known rather than looking to God. And you could say, well, he didn't hear the Lord. The Lord didn't answer him. He could have still stayed the course. He knew what God wanted him to do. Not hearing from the Lord, not having a word from the Lord is never an excuse to go outside his will, his laws, his mandate, his heart. It's never an excuse not to stay the course. And in this moment, Saul lost his battle. And, and I have to wonder how things would have read had he stayed the course with the Lord as if he had followed what Samuel had taught him, but he didn't. And we know Saul had a lot of trouble with that. Okay, we know that. So do we. All right, but it can't be an excuse because God will always make a way for us to stay the course. So again, in, it, if we go on to verse 12, it amazes me that this woman who he went to see, um, when she summoned Samuel, it is at that point when Samuel appears that she realizes that this disguised visitor who has entered his house her house is actually King Saul himself. It's interesting that when he first enters in, she doesn't have that realization. She doesn't know who he is. But for some reason, when Samuel actually appears, when she summons him and he appears, she knows who is in her home. And of course, Samuel's response to Saul, imagine this, 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 person summoned back from the dead says why have you disturbed me by calling me back right there there's a word of judgment that's coming against Saul and Saul responds because I'm in deep trouble the Philistines are at war with me God's left me won't reply by prophets or by dreams so I've called you to tell you to tell me what to do again how often do we call on somebody else to tell us what to do when what we need to do is stay the course with the Lord Verse 16, but Samuel, Samuel replied, why ask me since the Lord has left you and has become your enemy? The Lord has done just what he said he would. He has torn the kingdom from you and given it to your rival, David. The Lord has done this to you today because you refuse to carry out his fierce anger against the Amalekites. What's more, the Lord will hand you and the army of Israel over to the Philistines tomorrow. You and your sons will be here with me. Remember, Samuel's dead. So he's just told Saul that he and his sons are going to die. The Lord will bring down the entire army of Israel in defeat. Saul fell full length on the ground, paralyzed with fright because of Samuel's word. He was also faint with hunger for he'd eaten nothing all day and all night. Always oh, intrigues me the way that scripture brings in these details. Verse 21, when the woman saw how distraught he was, she said, sir, I have obeyed your command at the risk of my life. Now do what I say and let me give you a little something to eat so you can regain your strength, your strength for the trip back. I think in the back of her mind, she's saying, get him out of here. I want nothing to do with this. I did as I was asked, but not only did I summon the mighty prophet Samuel, who she would have known who he was, but now she realized that the king is in his presence. Not only is the king right there in her presence, but now he's down on the floor, totally even more distraught than he was when he came and paralyzed with fright because he has just heard the word of the Lord through Samuel, who he illegally summoned back from the dead, illegally by his own mandate, illegally by God's mandate. All right. But, but he hears in this, he knows he has heard the word from the Lord, but Saul refused to eat anything. His advisors joined the woman and urging him to eat, finally yielded got up to the ground, sat on the couch. The woman had been fattening a calf. She hurried out and killed it, took some flour, kneaded it into dough, baked unleavened bread. She brought the meal to Saul and his advisors. They ate it and they went out into the night. Basically, to go to war with the Philistines, to a war that they were going to lose. So by going to the medium, by going to this woman, by wanting the seance by having Samuel summoned back because he couldn't hear from the Lord. What Saul did is he had taken God out of the picture. And it is true that Saul had 
or God had rejected Saul as king. That is very true. That had already happened. But I have to wonder what would have happened in this portion of the story had Saul hung on to God, even when he felt embedded, even when he felt that God wasn't speaking through the prophets or in dreams. If he had said, God, you know what? I don't hear you. I can't feel you. I don't see you. I don't even know that you're here right now, but I'm going to hang on to you. I'm going to, you know, these are your people. And so if you don't battle for us, you know, what does that say? You know, where, where are you? Like Moses did. I mean, that was Moses' stance. God, if you're not going to go with us, we're not going, you know, if you're, how will people know that you're with us? You know, and, and so we see that model through scripture, even in desperate moments. But it is also in those desperate moments where, like Saul, we can get drawn into areas that we shouldn't go. And it, like I said, it may not be the occult. It could be our culture. It could be the peer pressure. It, we're, we're trying to make something to fit into a mold that we, that we understand in the absence of the voice of God. Whereas what we need to do is shore ourselves up in the word of God so that when we don't feel like there's the voice or even the presence of God, we stay the course that we can't be distracted, that we are able to battle that draw to the unknown. And no matter what solution comes at us, no matter how good it might seem in the natural, that if, if we're not sure it's from God or we know it's not from God, we refuse to go there. So let's pray again. We want to just ask the Lord to forgive us for the times when we have not gone according to his will, when we've, we've, we've really rejected him, just like Saul did in this moment. We want to take full responsibility for that and just ask for his forgiveness. And again, so that he can put that alert system in us so that we become sensitive to it and we don't go down this dangerous path when, you know, when, when things aren't going the way we want them to go. So just take a moment. If you're where you can close your eyes and just get before the Lord. If you have a journal with you, grab that so you can write down what you hear him say to you. And, and let's just take a moment and let's just ask his forgiveness. So Heavenly Father, we do come before you and, and God, you have put guardrails around us. You've put a safety net around us. You've given us your word and we can stand on that. So Father, when we haven't stood, when we have done what Saul did right here, when we've gone to other sources looking for answers or even trying to rely on, on prophets, people like Samuel who, who love you and have spoken into our lives and guided us, um, and, and where we're trying to look anywhere other but than to you, because we're, we're so desperate, God, we want to ask your forgiveness for when we've gone to the fortune tellers, for when we've gone to the palm readers, for when we've, when we've read the horoscopes, for, for when we've even sought counsel from the ungodly, all these various places, God, whatever they are, we just ask your forgiveness and just take a moment and listen to the Lord. Just ask him, is there any, is there anyone or anything that I need to confess right now? Lord, would you just reveal it? And so if he brought something up or someone up right now, just Lord, I take full responsibility for that. I ask your forgiveness, Lord. I ask your forgiveness. I want to be free. Father, I don't want to be hindered. I don't want that to hold me back. So, so Father, just we ask for your forgiveness. Lord, we just ask for your cleansing right now to flow through us. We ask that you remove any demonic attachments that came with that. And by the power and authority of the true Lord Jesus Christ, we just send all demonic back to the, to the feet of the true Lord Jesus. Jesus, you can do with them whatever you want. We're just sending them to you. And if any demonic assignments we cancel right now in the name of the true Lord Jesus Christ. And again, we send all demonic straight to the feet of Jesus. So Lord, just wash us and cleanse us. And Father, we do, we pray for the installation of that Holy Spirit alert system. That Father, when we feel like we don't feel you, we don't see you, we don't know what to do, that we just stay the course, that we go deeper into your word, that we begin to worship even more, that we seek your face. In your face only will we seek God. And Lord, because we want to be on the straight and narrow with you, Father, we know that these side paths can look really appealing. But Father, help us to know, help that alert, let that, yet that, let that yellow light blink that we would know that we need to be really cautious in this moment and to just look for you. So father, thank you that we were created to hear your voice. Just say that right now. I'm created to hear the voice of God. I am created to hear the voice of God. So father, we just thank you in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Again, thank you for joining me today. Um, Man, this is so big right now with going places. There's so much shifting right now. And 
trying to go to other sources. And I just pray that this has really been a blessing to you as you've listened to this and you've been encouraged, edified, built up. Um, if that's the case, I want to ask you to do me a favor and share this with others. Just hit share. Um, you know, if you're listening to a podcast, share it with others. If you're watching it on Facebook Live or on YouTube, go ahead and put some comments and, and again, share it with others. Because imagine what would happen if the body of Christ became alert to the schemes of the demonic and to these potholes, to these side roads that get us so far off course. Imagine what would change in our lives and in the world around us, the impact that we would have for the kingdom of heaven. So again, thank you for joining me today. If you haven't done it already, please feel free to check out the website, ruthhendrickson.org. While you're there, please sign up for the email list. The social media platforms are always changing right now. And so that is, we're not going to bombard you with emails one to two a week, no more than that. Um, but it also helps you stay connected should things shift and we have to switch our platforms. So Again, everyone, you just be so blessed. Keep going for the Lord. Let him put that alert system into you so that you don't do what Saul did. I don't want to do what Saul did. I want to stay the course. I want to keep walking with the Lord. How about you?